Do you guys love bulletin boards as much as I do? I love a good bulletin board and I love taking my time and making it cute and all the things. But I'm also one of those teachers that once I create it, like it's done and it might stay up in my classroom for several years because I don't like to change them out all the time. But I do really enjoy them. But I'm also a firm believer that bulletin boards need to have a purpose and a function. So you may or may not have seen this picture on social media. I share it pretty frequently and then I also share it I'm in a lot of my professional development trainings that I do, but this is my math station bulletin board. And I often get asked like, what are all the different components? What are all the posters? What do they mean? How do your kids use it? And all the things. So I thought it would be really fun to just give you guys a quick tour of my math station bulletin board. So let's go. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marcy Bernithi and I am the teacher author behind SaddleUpForSecondGrade.com and a national educational consultant where I love helping teachers implement guided math and improve their math instruction in their classroom. And so today we're going to be talking all about math station bulletin board setup things, all the things. So let's take a look at this picture right here. So this is my setup. One, when you are thinking about your math station setup for your classroom, you want to make sure that everything is in one centralized location. You don't want your bulletin board or your rotation chart to be on one side of the classroom and then maybe your baskets with the activities, um, and maybe your rules or something like that, shared materials, you don't want those to be on the other side of the classroom. You want everything to be in one centralized location so that students can easily find and get what they need. So the first thing you might notice in this picture is my rotation board. So I keep mine in a large pocket chart. I, guys, I keep mine very simple. I actually created this because this is how I taught myself to implement math stations in my classroom. There are lots of different types of rotation boards out there. This is just what I always use because it made sense in my brain and it's what worked for my kids. And so I just kind of just stuck with what worked for me. But my students are grouped based on their ability and each of my group's names were different animals because well, second graders liked animals. And so that's what those cards that you can see inside the pocket, that is going to, that's going to show where each group is going that day. Across the top, you see my station labels. Again, I kept things very simple. I have station number one, station number two, station number three, technology, and meet with the teacher. So you might notice in that that very first card in this picture, and it has a picture of a monkey on it and there is a clothespin attached to it. So maybe um, it's our first round of the day. So wherever that clothespin is clipped, that is showing students where they are going that day. So for example, where that clothespin is clipped, our monkeys are gonna go to station number one. Tigers are going to go to station number two. My pandas are going to go to station number three. My gorillas are going to technology. And then lions are coming to meet, the meet with the teacher at the small group table. When it's time to rotate, I have a student simply take that clothespin and they just move it one row down. So then lions would go to station number one. Monkeys would go to station two. Tigers would go to station three and so forth. So each time we rotate, I just have a student helper move that clothespin down. When we get all the way to the bottom of our rotation chart, the clothespin just moves back up to the top. The reason why I keep my rotation cards in a pocket chart is because my stations are constantly changing. And so because of that, I can easily move my cards around inside of the pocket chart and I'm not having to worry about unstapling something and restapling it back. And so it just kind of allows me um, and gives me the flexibility to move my groups around to different stations as needed. 
Now, right above my rotation board, you're going to see a set of, these are just blank animal posters. Typically, they are not blank. This is where I do one of two things. Maybe you write student names or numbers um, because with your guided math groups, your groups are constantly changing each time you start a new concept. And so I might write student names or numbers for the group that they're in. So all of my gorillas, I'm going to write either all of their names or numbers. So you can choose to write student names or numbers, or maybe you write the title of the activity that they are doing. So maybe let's see my tigers, they're going to station two. What is the name of the activity that they're going to be completing? So um, that is kind of typically up to you. Most of the time, I would just either write their names or their numbers on those posters. But again, it's flexible and can be up to you. Right above that, those blank posters, you are going to see, this is a white and blue poster. This is my math station rules. And so these are rules that I introduce um, at the beginning of the year when we are first learning and implementing stations. And we practice these routines and procedures constantly. We practice them throughout the year because this is something that your kids need to know how to do. So um, I have our rules displayed and they are something that we constantly reinforce throughout the school year. All right, across the board, you're gonna see a pink and white poster that says, ask three before me. This is a simple classroom management strategy. You probably might be familiar with it, but this is one of the things that I use to help minimize interruptions at my small group table. So what I do is I choose three students who I know can answer any type of question. I know that these kids can help other students figure something out. So when a kid gets stuck, maybe they don't know how to complete an activity or they just need help with something. Maybe they don't understand the directions. Instead of coming and interrupting my small group time, they have to go ask those three students for help before they can come interrupt me at the small group table. And so by implementing this, it allows me to really focus on the kids at my small group and not have to deal with a lot of interruptions, helping students explain uh, or to help, you know, explain directions or things like that. So ask three before me is just um, incorporating student helpers. Now, right below that Ask Three poster, you are going to see a voice level chart. This is a poster. I have it laminated. And then you will also notice another close. And so then whatever voice level the kids are supposed to be practicing during that time, we just simply move that clothespin up and down, um, up and down that chart so kids know, hey, Right now we are supposed to be whispering or we are supposed to be practicing our partner voices. And so this is another classroom management strategy that we really kind of focus on at the beginning of the year and then we implement it throughout the year. But this just lets them know what kind of voice level they should be working on. And then the last thing you are going to see right below that next to my rotation board is a blank poster that says, I'm done, now what? This is for my early finishers. This is a poster. I just have it laminated. You could print this off and put it inside of a plastic sleeve and write on it with a dry erase marker. But what I would do is I would just write out an activity that kids could complete whenever they finish their station work. So instead of coming up to me and again, interrupting that small group time, instead of coming up and saying, Miss Bernice, like I'm done. I don't know what I'm supposed to do next they can go and they can look and see what the early finisher activity is and they can start on it. So it could be as simple as maybe my color and write by codes. Maybe you just have them doing something with manipulatives. You can give them a tub of manipulatives and just let them explore. Um, it doesn't have to be something elaborate or require a lot of thinking. Um, but as long as you have some sort of early finisher activity, that all of your students can work on until it's time to clean up and rotate.
So there's a couple of other things you might notice in, um, in this photo. Those baskets that you see that are labeled stations one, two, and three, that is just where I keep um, those different station activities and all the things. I am gonna put a link in the description of this video that's gonna link to um, some station organization ideas um, where I kind of go into further detail on this and I explain how I organize all of my math station materials. So I'll drop that link below here as well. But that's it, that is my math station, or my math station bulletin board. If you are interested in the math station rule poster, the Ask Three Before Me and I'm Done Now What, that is a free download in my TPT store. So you can actually head on over to the link in my description and you can download those posters to, um, for free to use in your classroom. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and I will see you guys in the next video.